We all love eating chocolates. But what if we are gifted cocoa beans instead? Can we really relish the cocoa beans just like chocolates? Of course not. Similarly, there are so many organisms which require a few important constituents, but they are not present in the utilizable form. One such example is that of nitrogen. Yes, atmospheric nitrogen is extremely important for the proper functioning of cells. The main reason for that is that proteins are made up of amino acids which are in turn made up of nitrogen molecules. Also, many other compounds important for the cell are made up of nitrogen. So, are we saying that nitrogen is required by all organisms? Of course, yes. But we can't really breathe nitrogen from the air. So, this problem will be fixed by the plants for us. Yes, they will synthesize compounds having nitrogen. And when we consume plants, the nitrogen will enter our body. Simple, isn't it? Actually not. Problem of nitrogen consumption by animals got solved. But what about the problem of nitrogen consumption by plants? Nitrogen is present in abundance in the atmosphere. However, the divalent molecule has a very strong triple bond shared between its atoms and it's very difficult to break this bond. It requires extremely high amounts of energy. One instance occurring naturally is the lightning process which helps break the two atoms apart. But that doesn't always help. So the problem still exists. Even plants cannot take in nitrogen directly from the air. So now who will solve this problem? We don't need to worry. Plants also seek the help of some other organisms, the microorganisms. Yes, several bacteria and blue-green algae are a part of this activity. This important process is referred to as nitrogen fixation. What do we exactly mean by this? The term fixation refers to converting an element into its usable form. So, are we saying that these organisms convert nitrogen into utilizable forms? Absolutely! These organisms are referred to as nitrogen-fixing organisms. These nitrogen fixers present in soil convert the atmospheric nitrogen molecules into compounds like nitrates, nitrites and ammonium. These compounds are then taken up by the roots of the plants. And then the plants uses these compounds to synthesize their own proteins. Consumption of these plants by animals and humans then gets the nitrogen into the animal kingdom. This is how the process of nitrogen fixation occurs. Let me quickly recap what we learnt. Humans need nitrogen, but they can't take it directly from the atmosphere. Hence, they get it from the plants. But even plants can't take it directly from the atmosphere. This is where the nitrogen fixing organisms come into the picture. They convert the atmospheric nitrogen into consumable compounds for the plants. And then animals consume the plants to get this nitrogen. But wait, if all the nitrogen in the atmosphere is gradually fixed by these microbes and used by plants and us, then it would deplete, right? What if it gets entirely depleted? What will happen then? How will organisms survive? Guess what? Nature, as always, holds a secret solution to this. And that secret is the nitrogen cycle. Yes, the nitrogen in the atmosphere is brought into the biological world where it is utilized. But it is also sent back to the atmosphere by some means. This process of cyclic flow of nitrogen from the atmosphere to the living world and back into the atmosphere is called as the nitrogen cycle. But how does this cycle actually flow? Let's have a look. As we know, the atmospheric nitrogen is fixed in two major ways. Firstly, by the rhizobium bacteria living in root nodules of the leguminous plants and secondly, by nitrogen-fixing bacteria and blue-green algae in the soil. The first type involves fixing of nitrogen exclusively for legumes. The roots of these plants have nodules that are small bead-like structures. These nodules are the homes for a group of nitrogen-fixing bacteria called the rhizobium. The roots can thus directly get benefited due to the activity of these bacteria. 
But what about the non-leguminous plants? We don't need to worry. We have the second method. The nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the soil and the blue-green algae help in converting the atmospheric nitrogen into usable compounds. These compounds will be absorbed by the plants and utilized further. Now when animals consume these plants, the nitrogen enters their body. Now how will the nitrogen get back into the atmosphere from here? Definitely not by breathing. Let me give you a hint. Have you come across the process of decomposition? Yes, that's the answer to this question. When these organisms die, their bodies get buried in the soil. Now here the decomposers are all set into the action. The decomposers help to break down the various compounds containing nitrogen. So what will be the result? Yes, it results in releasing the nitrogen trapped inside the organism's body back into the soil. Amazing, isn't it? But wait, here's something more interesting. The soil also has another category of bacteria called the denitrifying bacteria. What could they be useful for? As the name says, they will help release the nitrogen molecules from these compounds present in soil into the atmosphere. Yes, these denitrifying bacteria sometimes convert the available nitrogen containing compounds from the soil to release molecular nitrogen. That means they do not really wait for the decomposers to complete the process. Whenever these denitrifying bacteria encounter the nitrogen containing compounds, they simply convert it and release molecular nitrogen. A keen look at the complete process gives us an understanding that the entire process flows in a cyclic manner. This is how several types of bacteria help in ecologically important processes like nitrogen fixation. <laughs>